The History of Waterbending Waterbending, one of the four elemental bending arts, is the hydrokinetic ability to control water in all of its various forms. This type of bending is used by the people of the water tribe, who are divided into the southern, northern, and lesser known foggy swamp tribes, as well as those of the United Republic, each with their own unique bending style. Water is the element of change, the moon is the source of power in waterbending, and the original waterbenders learned to bend by observing how the moon pushed and pulled the tides. The water tribes are the only people who did not learn to bend from an animal, though the moon and ocean spirits took the form of koi fish in the mortal world near the beginning of the Avatar world. The fighting style of waterbending is mostly fluid and graceful, acting in concert with the environment. Foggy swamp style waterbending, however, is more rigid and straight. Waterbenders deal with the flow of energy. They let their defense become their offense, turning their opponent's own forces against them. Even when waterbenders do take an attack stance, their moves always appear to flow from one to the other. Welcome to the Amagi. In today's video, we're going over the history of waterbending. Before we begin, we publish new content every week, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. During the era of Rava, the power of water was first granted by the water lion turtle, who had temporarily provided as protection to those venturing into the spirit wilds. However, after the lion turtles renounced their roles as protectors of mankind during the era of the Avatar, the turtles refused to give people their power anymore. The descendants of the people living atop the water lion turtle eventually learned to waterbend by observing how the moon pushed and pulled the tides of the ocean. They learned how to simulate the effect themselves. As such, they have a strong spiritual connection to the moon and its counterpart, the ocean. In fact, waterbending is the only bending art to originate from spirits instead of animals, and additionally, any adverse effect on these spirits detrimentally affects waterbenders. Fighting Style Waterbending's strength is its great versatility. Rather than supporting a separate set of offensive methods, waterbending employs defensive techniques that can be transformed into attacks and counters, defense into offense. Instead of simply deflecting an attack, waterbending's defensive maneuvers focus on control, achieved through turning an opponent's own strength against them rather than directly harming the opponent. There are four waterbending styles known to exist in the Avatar universe, namely the Northern Style, Southern Style, Foggy Swamp Style, and Pro-Bending Style. Due to the circumstances of the Hundred Year War, the Southern Style was nearly extinct, with only Hama left as the Southern Water Tribe Waterbending Master during Avatar Aang's time to be fully trained in waterbending. However, Hama passed on all her knowledge to Katara before they became enemies. As the Foggy Swamp Tribe is an offshoot of the Southern Water Tribe, Foggy Swamp Style may have first developed from the Southern Style, but throughout the intervening generations it has evolved into its own distinct style. Northern and Southern Style The Northern Water Tribe developed the first style of waterbending for use in their home at the North Pole. When the Southern Water Tribe formed in the South Pole, they developed a slightly different style that is nonetheless similar to the Northern style. The traditional waterbending styles of Northern and Southern water tribes focus on graceful, fluid movements for their attacks. These styles frequently make use of switching the state of water from liquid to ice and snow. It is with this technique that the waterbenders built their large polar cities. The Northern waterbending style seems to traditionally perform more defensive, strategic, and architectural techniques in waterbending, while the southern waterbending style seems to be more aggressive and offensive than the northern style. Foggy Swamp Style Foggy Swamp Style is the waterbending style used by the Foggy Swamp tribe of the Earth Kingdom. Instead of the fluid, graceful movements of the other two waterbending styles, they keep a rigid and straight stance, possibly reflecting the usually stagnant nature of water in their swamp homelands, and use stiff and circular arm movements to move water like a propeller. This style seems to be effective in moving the tribe's boats. They do not appear to use ice or snow attacks as often as their polar cousins, possibly due to the lack of ice in their environment. However, an exception was seen during the Day of Black Sun when one member used ice to patch a hole in one of its submarines. One of the swamp's tribesmen, who, was able to develop plant bending. It is unlikely that other polar waterbenders were aware of this technique, though Hama did not express surprise when learning of it preferring to remove the water from plants rather than manipulating the plant. The battle capabilities of this style seem to be accurate, since Tho, Due, and the other swamp waterbenders use this style in battle. 
making noticeable foot movements in addition to moving their arms in the desired direction to shield themselves from harm before stepping and performing an elegant punching motion to attack. Pro Bending Style After 70 years, the art of waterbending changed greatly. The benders began to adapt and develop new techniques. One particular change was the development of pro bending. Because of the hindering rules of the game, waterbenders' styles adapted to match. For instance, waterbenders are restricted from using continuous streams of water. To compensate, they have modernized waterbending to mainly include short blasts and blocks. One noticeable change in the art is a more frequent use of the lower body in bending. Originally, the lower body was not significantly used in waterbending. However, pro bending has enabled some waterbenders, such as Avatar Korra, to use high arching kicks to direct streams of water. Another new technique of waterbending is that it also has somewhat moved away from traditional grace and more into the quickness of the attack. Reminiscent of firebending, the waterbenders often use sharp, quick, boxer-like punches when bending, allowing the players to stay light on their feet and able to dodge incoming attacks on the field. The battle capabilities of this technique are far more diverse than that of the other techniques. This is mainly due to fighting being the main purpose of pro-bending. Korra has been seen fighting outside the ring effectively, implementing her pro-bending style waterbending against a variety of opponents. Weaknesses External Water Source A waterbender gains a significant advantage or disadvantage over other benders depending on the amount of water in the vicinity. Enemies are able to take advantage of this by driving them away from water sources. As a result, traveling waterbenders often carry a water skin with them at all times. Master waterbenders are able to extract water from plants, ultimately killing the plants and even condense water vapor out of thin air. Binding Waterbending is almost entirely dependent on the movement of the bender's arms, quite the opposite of earthbending, which mostly uses the lower body. This leaves the waterbender vulnerable when he or she is bound at the hands or has had the flow of chi blocked in the arms. Waterbending can be performed with the lower body, such as when Katara anchored her feet in ice during her fight against Master Paku, or when she created a piece of ice to use as a surfboard when fighting a giant sea serpent. Another lower body technique is outlined on the waterbending scroll stolen by Katara, from which both she and Aang learned a technique named the Water Whip. However, Katara used her feet when she fought the guard earthbenders in the royal palace, performing a larger than normal water whip. Hama also briefly tells Katara how in the Fire Nation, prison guards bound the waterbenders' arms each time they were given water to drink, emphasizing their helplessness. Lunar Eclipse Another waterbending weakness is its dependence on the moon. Although waterbenders gain power from the moon, with waterbending at its zenith during full moons, the moon's absence during a lunar eclipse results in a complete loss of waterbending ability. Emotional State A waterbender's power comes from the internal life energy chi. Due to this, a waterbender's power is connected to his or her present emotional state. If an inexperienced waterbender were to lose his or her temper, their waterbending force is intensified, but in turn, control is lost. This was demonstrated by Katara when she lost her temper against Sokka and inadvertently cracked an iceberg. Although this has the potential to be quite dangerous in a waterbender with little to no training, it also serves as a boon to a bender with proper training and experience, as well as balance over his or her emotions. Lightning Impure water is a natural conductor of electricity. Considering how many waterbending techniques involve a physical connection to water itself, the bender is left vulnerable to a lightning strike. Mako was able to exploit this weakness and defeat Minghua. Overcoming Weakness Some of the standard waterbending weaknesses can be overcome by skilled waterbending masters. In environments without water, a master can pull water particles out of the clouds, air, and even out of living organisms such as plants and trees. The drawback is that if water is removed from a living organism, it will wither and die. Water can also be obtained from a master's own body if need be, from sweat or saliva. The amount of water able to be removed from the air will vary depending on weather conditions. As only a small proportion of the planet's atmosphere contains gaseous water, these amounts would be limited even at the best of times. However, the amount of water can be sufficient to form a usable weapon such as ice claws which do not need a lot of water to form. Furthermore, binding does not work on waterbenders who have mastered the ability to waterbend using the lower body and or without any arms such as Minghua. Spirituality in Waterbending Like the moon controlling the tides, 
Waterbenders move water using their qi to mimic gravitational pull by choosing how to direct their energy utilizing two jings, which in turn work to push and pull the water that is being controlled. Because of this lunar sympathy, a waterbender's power is stronger at night, at its absolute zenith during a full moon, and lost during a lunar eclipse. A waterbender's power is also enhanced during the rain, for obvious reasons. Furthermore, a waterbender's power is strongest when he or she is situated in colder climates during the winter or near their native polar homelands. Legend further elaborates that Tui, meaning push, the moon spirit, and its symbiotic partner La, meaning pole, the ocean spirit, gave up their immortality to be part of the mortal world. In fact, these spirits exist in the physical forms of two koi fish eternally circling one another in a pond, in the highly spiritual oasis in the capital city of the Northern Water Tribe. The push and pull relationship between the moon's gravity and the water's inertia is represented by yin and yang. The moon spirit koi is white with a black forehead marking and the ocean spirit koi is black with a white forehead marking, mimicking the two primal forces. Without the equilibrium of these two spiritual aspects, waterbenders lose their powers. This was illustrated when Tui's mortal form was killed by Admiral Zhao during the Fire Nation's siege of the Northern Water Tribe. The moon disappeared from the sky, the balance of the world was upset, and the waterbenders defending the North Pole were rendered powerless. The Fire Nation's invading fleet was subsequently defeated when the Avatar Aang acted as a literal avatar of law and combined to form a gigantic water creature that swept the Fire Nation forces out to sea. Balance was restored when Princess Yue, who had received a part of Tui's life force at birth to prevent her immediate death, returned that force and sacrificed herself so that Tui might live. Waterbending emphasizes symbiosis, acting in concert with one's environment and guiding it, rather than avoiding, controlling, or working against it. In the Foggy Swamp Tribe, waterbenders were shown to be especially attuned to the environment, as one of its members, Hu, was able to achieve enlightenment by meditating under a tree in the heart of the swamp, and connecting with it the same way it is connected with the rest of the swamp, as it is a superior organism. Weapons The only known times a weapon has been used with waterbending was when Avatar Kyoshi used her fans to create a wave, and when Aang used his staff to freeze water. However, Many waterbenders carry water skins of various sizes to provide them with a source of water in places where it is scarce, such as deserts and urban locations. Did you enjoy our video? Be sure to check out these other great videos from the Umagi, and make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.